I'm gonna have to get something in there. There's a crowbar by the hell that ain't rock solid. Are you gonna see my biggest pet hate in this video? This drives me insane when plumbers do this. But I want you to let me know once you watch the video who's in the right, am I in the right, or am the plumbers that do it this way in the right? We've got two toilets, both need repairing, both different types, but both of them was an absolute nightmare. Yeah, that was pulling my hair out this day. So, as always, any questions, just drop them in the comments. But I do need your help on another thing as well. I have a look, had a look at my analytics. And people who watch my video, 30% subscribed, 70% aren't subscribed. Now, I want to try and get that 50-50. Please look at subscribing. It really helps out the channel. We am trying to get to 5k for the giveaway, but we can only get there with your help. So come and join the community. As I said, any questions you have, drop them in the comments. I'll do my best to answer them. But, yeah, let's get straight into these toilet repairs. Okay, so I've finally got myself a microphone, so hopefully it may be better. I've got a toilet repair to do. This one's been leaking. I've had a new floor fitted and the toilet started leaking. So let's take a look. I'm struggling a little bit to push it as well, but the leak is actually from, you're not going to see down there, in between the cistern and the toilet. As I see underneath there, but look how much them's going on. Yeah, then we're going to be fun to get out. I have got a new, um, new tool now for that. I'll show you. So it's like a wing nut adapter that you can put into your screwdriver or your impact wheel. Now I've got two for know, seven quid. But that should fit straight onto that wing nut. Right. It should actually fit straight into my wheeler. Pray to the plumbing gods, this works. Oh boy. It's just moving round and around and around. So, the other side's the same. And I'm just going to loosen the system. And I've snapped. Can't get the screwdriver on that. That one's come out. This one looks solid. Now, five minutes into a job, you're thinking, what? Got some DVD for me, honey. See if that helps. Hopefully, that will do the trick. Right, so got a little stump in there. Give me a try. Okay, okay, come on. Success, we got it out. Cold inlet is connected to the fill valve. Both of the screws are out, inlet's disconnected. And so when I turned the wing nuts, it just I'll just do <sighs> so I think the the steel bit, I think that's just all fell to pieces. So I think I'm just gonna give it a bit of brute force and pray that I don't break it. Cause then wing nuts are not going anywhere. Yeah, let's be brave and just give it a tool. Please don't break. Look on. Yeah, I'm <laughs> Okay. Now lift up. How's that bitch looking then? I need about 10 pairs of hands here. There we go. All right, that's the old floor. I'm standing on the radiator. There we go. That's it. Yeah, there's absolutely nothing left of that. And this is what the bottom side looks like. There's your donut washer. Yeah. There's that. That's a steel plate. Washed it to hell. Just absolutely nothing left of the side. So, yeah, let's undo this nut. Yeah, that's it. I think it's about for the size now. So I can't get this handle off. There's like a little screw around here, so all I've got to do is bend this bit here, try and bend it again. There we go. I've got it here, so bed that through out of position. Seal on the bottom. 
Let me just feed that through. I need. There you go, nice and simple. So on the bottom, give it a quick clean off. I'm going to put on a new plate, class coupling kit. So we look through there. Oh. Right. Like that, so it's bent side down, so it's, it's completely flat across there, and that goes on there. Make it back and up can go on. Right, let's clean all this up. In there, there's a crowbar. Why the hell was that? That is rock solid. Okay, so that one I managed just to pull through there. You know, see, I think I've knocked the edge of the nut and bolt off. That one's there, but that one I've just stopped in the wd 40 and it's going nowhere absolutely nowhere. So before we take apart the ball cock and look, it's inside there, it's blocked. Just push it out, yeah, there's nothing in there. I need to get it out. Hmm. And okay, that works. Yeah. That. So the microphone decided to stop recording at this point, but new fibre washer on the inlet, cleaned the pan up the best we could, and the system is ready to fit with a new dynamic washer on. So we just lined it up, threaded the bolts through, then we can get down the left-hand side, reconnect the overflow, and just make sure that it's fed through. And we have to use a couple of washers the nut was going straight through the hole so we just put them washers on got the new bolt on then you use that new tool the wing nut adapter tighten it up turn the water back on and we realized we forgot to put the uh the spare back onto the inlet valve so we got that back on and we did have to twist it around because it was facing the wrong way this floor is brand new so i did put protective film off it because they really want to Get that wrecked. Yeah, that is job done. Filling up to the water line. Fishing point. Yeah, we're lucky one. That's first one done. Rusted in bolts on toilets. Every plumber's nightmare. You got to undo them wing nuts and them just rock solid. Spraying with WD40, try and get your grips in there. That wing nut adapter for less than seven pounds for two. Get on it. Google it, Amazon. That's where I got mine from. Really good tool to have. Chucking your tool bag. The day comes when you've got most of the bolts. Yeah, it'll pay for itself. So on to the next one. This one contains my pet hate. I hate it when plumbers do this. So it's another toilet, another siphon to do, but this one turned into a nightmare as well for a different reason. Again, let me know in the comments who's right, am I right, or the plumber that did this. Let's have a look. Another broken toilet. So we got called out to this as it wouldn't flush. So if we had the same, exactly the same one, we could have just twisted it out, put a new one in, but we don't carry that. We do carry one of these on the van. I say it's just a Flowmaster one from Screwfix. They're actually quite good, to be fair. I do rate them. Come with a three-year guarantee and then reasonable on price. 
So we're just going to undo the nut that holds the system to the pan, push it up, and that will start it draining down. Now, you can use a wet vac if you want, but this is an easy way to drain it down. Just take the nuts completely out. There you go. That will drain into a tub. And there's two screws normally that holds the system back to the wall. So we can undo them. Then we're going to disconnect the inlet. Now, unlike the last one, there's no overflow. It's a built-in overflow on this one. So you can use a compression spanner there. Undo the inlet connection to the fill valve. Now it's ready to come off. And at this point, as soon as I started lifting, yeah, I already know how this has been installed with a boatload of silicon. It is my pet hate. I absolutely hate it when I see silicon used on rubber O-rings or washers. There's no need for it. That was caked in silicon. So now I've got to scrape that off. I don't know why I thought a scraper was a good idea. I had to get my Stanley blade in there. But it doesn't end there. So I'm going to undo the nut, the whole siphoning. And that's an oil filter wrench. I normally use that on filters. Because of the size of it, it was perfect to get this big nut off. So we undo the nut, got that out of the way. And it wouldn't budge. It was absolutely rock solid. It's because I'm pretty sure the last plumber used a tube of silicon on this. It was ridiculous. Like, honestly, the amount of silicon that they used, I just couldn't get it out. It was proper in there. I'm swearing in my head at this point. So I've got to try and break that silicon off and try and get that out. So I'm whacking it, stabbing it, just doing anything. I mean, it's six o'clock at night. This was my last job of the day. It should have been easy. It should have been nice, straightforward. But now, when, yeah, look at the amount of silicon that's coming out of there. Just ridiculous. There's no need to use silicon there. Some people might disagree with me, but I don't use silicon. So you're just jabbing the screwdriver in there, trying to break the silicon off, trying to get this siphon out. And so with all this silicon, it probably added another half hour onto my time. So eventually it did come out, but it did leave a lot of silicon in there, which now we've got to get in there, scrape it all out, clean it all out. What an absolute nightmare. See, I'm not impressed. But it doesn't end there. There's all silicon in the bottom as well. So we've got to get in there. Scrape all the inside of the system out. Not what you want later at night. But eventually we've got some nice clean surfaces. And we can reassemble it. Now them are the bolts hold the system down. Look at that washer. It's like a dome shape. There's no need for silicon. People will argue with me and say. Just put silicon on there. You don't need to. It's designed so you don't need to. So it's going to get in there, tighten it up. And to be honest with you, I've never had a problem doing it like this. Stop the all now, I'm going to have one where I don't put silicon in and it leaks. But yeah, new donut washer on there, feed it back through. Again, no silicon on that donut washer, it doesn't need it. So I'm going to put the nuts back on and tighten the system down. So we're not going to over tighten the right hand one until we've got the left hand one in. So we're going to evenly tighten them up now just to pull that system down and lock in that donut washer again new fiber washer on that flexi then we can get that reconnected onto the fill valve turn the water back on and just check for any leaks and it was absolutely fine checked all around the back all around the front everywhere there wasn't one leak and no silicon used So we just got to connect up the flush button, get that on, give it a flush and take it back off because we forgot to put the screws back in. So I'll screw it back to the wall, pull it all back together. One more check for legs, give it a good flush. Checks all the way around and said, absolutely, no problems, no silicon used exactly the way it should be. Let me know in the comments if you agree, silicon or no silicon. Yeah, that is one happy toilet. It drives me mad. The seal is designed to seal. You don't need to add the silicon. I've never used, I've never added silicon. Okay, I might lie there. I remember having a basin waste once where I just could not get it sealed. So I joined the dark side and bobbed some silicon in there. That's the only time I can remember doing it. But silicon shouldn't be used on seals. It really shouldn't. Now, the bolts that go through the system, okay, I might forgive you for them. But as you saw, it's designed to groove into there. It's designed so it will seal. 
But why about silicon? It just makes the next plumber's life a nightmare. I suppose if you ain't going back to it, then, you know, why not? But come on, think about the next man. Be kind to your next plumber. So who is right about the silicon? Am I right or the plumber that did it that way? Let me know in the comments. As I said, the silicon around that siphon was just absolute overkill. I've never seen, I, I don't quite remember last time I seen that much silicon on a siphon. Absolutely ridiculous. But we got there in the end. We done the repair. So we made it this far. Thank you very much. We am pushing on for five K subscribers. I said I'll do a big giveaway. Once we got there, I am in talks with somebody, the manufacturer, to get something sent out so we can start building it up a little bit. So I do need your help. Please look at subscribing, comment on the video, click like, all the usuals. But yeah, thank you again for all your support. Yeah. Catch you on the next one.